four, five, six, seven, eight. Up until this fall, with almost every step I took, I counted. I avoided all lines on the ground, I couldn't step on two different types of surfaces at the same time, and I didn't allow myself to step with my right foot more than my left. Whenever I was on the move, my mind was occupied and concentrating. I wasn't trying to reach a daily step goal for my Fitbit, nor was I just bored walking from class to class. Rather, my mind convinced me that if I stepped on a pebble with my left foot and didn't do so with my right foot, that someone I loved would die. That might sound crazy, but for me, that's my normal. See, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes, I really did just say that to a room full of my peers, teachers, friends, and family. Mental health is surrounded by so many stigmas and stereotypes, and the reason I'm here talking is to help break down that shameful wall. Now, I imagine when I said OCD, a lot of you might have pictured obsessive hand washing or germophobia, but OCD isn't always obsessively organizing your environment or constantly cleaning my room. My parents are here and they can vouch for that. But for me, OCD has controlled my life, requiring everything I do to be even, symmetrical, and checked at least four times. This disorder has two main aspects to it. The first being categorized into the obsessive part of OCD. These are called intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts are unwanted words, images, or thoughts that cause a person anxiety and unpleasantness, but that person isn't able to get rid of that thought. So for me, a major part of my OCD stems from what's called harm OCD. This means that a lot of my intrusive thoughts are of fears or violent images. So for example, while walking down the stairs, I'll get an intrusive image of a person in front of me tripping and breaking their neck. Or it could be an intrusive thought while driving, like if you left arm jerked, you'd crash into all of those cars. Now, fear and anxiety are a healthy, important part of life for everyone. But when you have OCD or an anxiety disorder, that fear and anxiety can take over almost every moment of your life. One of my previous therapists explained it to me like this. Everyone has what's called a worry brain. Your worry brain plays an important role by sending off warning alarms at appropriate times, but then can be dismissed when you can see you're not in danger. Now, imagine that worry brain as a magnet. For a healthy brain, that magnet will not overpower other thoughts. But with an OCD worry brain, that magnet is so strong, it has the ability to overtake everything at any time, even when there's no reason for fear. So imagine you're sitting in class with no external stressors. It's just a typical day of math. Then you get an intrusive image of your teacher tripping while lecturing and hitting their head. With a healthy brain, you might still get this thought, but you're able to dismiss it. But with an OCD worry brain, that thought will hold all of your attention, causing you to become extremely overwhelmed with anxiety, preventing you from paying attention to the task at hand. So the second aspect of this disorder are compulsions, which are categorized into the, yep, you have the compulsive part of OCD. My compulsions are small actions that I take in order to make things right. An example of this is reading anything I write, including this TED Talk, four extra times in order to check if I swore or said something offensive even though I know I didn't. So it's normal for people to reread emails and essays, but when you have OCD, that otherwise healthy editing can take a very unhealthy turn. Your brain will convince you that the words you're seeing are not actually the words that are there. This, can, this makes me go back and reread old text, emails, and past assignments to check for these out of place offensive statements. Other compulsions I have tend to deal with balance and symmetry, like how I count my steps or step evenly on colors and surfaces. A lot of my compulsions are small actions that my brain convinces me I need to take. Because these actions seem so insignificant, outside observers assume that they don't pose a threat. So for example, every time I crack my knuckles on my right hand, I have to do so with my left hand in the exact same order. Or if my left hip bumps into a table, I have to bump my right hip into a table. The list goes on and on. Now while I agree that these actions by themselves don't pose a threat to everyday life, people with OCD don't complete compulsions just because. Behind every compulsion is a very convincing and often frightening reason. That reason can be as extreme as being convinced a loved one would die or you'd fail all your classes if a compulsion isn't completed correctly. Now that's a lot of information, most of it probably a little shocking and new, and that's okay. I myself didn't know I had OCD until last fall. I was 16 and a half years old and had no clue, even though I'd been living with this disorder my entire life. The first time I was diagnosed is actually pretty funny. I was sitting at the lunch table with my friends, and some of them started quizzing each other for the test in, on brain behavior and psychology. And some of the OCD vocabulary I was hearing was hitting way too close to home. So that night, I asked my parents if I could go see a therapist. I started seeing an OCD specialist and was officially diagnosed with OCD and general anxiety. 
Then a month into my senior year, I left school to attend a partial hospitalization program. I was gone from school for three full weeks and three weeks of half days. That's a lot of missing classes to get treatment for OCD, and I had no idea what to expect. So I'd arrive at the program in the morning and have group therapy with other kids. This would typically be mindfulness or art therapy to help manage more general anxiety issues. Then the remaining five hours was intense individual exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is basically when you tell your therapist what scares you, and then they make you do it, from until that level of fear comes down from the OCD worry level to the normal healthy worry brain level. For me, this often looked like leaning over stairwell railings or sitting with dried hair gel in my hands to get used to the texture, or having people bump into one side of me and resisting correcting it on the other, and so much more. The biggest exposure I ever did dealt with my intrusive thoughts of liquids going in and out of my veins when I got a shot. So for the last week of program, I sat examining a box of doctor's needles and looking at clean ones close up. Then on the last day of program, I gave myself a shot. Yeah, I stuck a needle in my own arm and didn't even have an anxiety attack because apparently exposure therapy works. So exposure therapy is part of what's called cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. That's one type of treatment I've done. I've been to 10 different clinicians, and that's a lot of doctors, but they've all helped me and focused on different aspects of my mental health struggles. The therapist I now go to does DBT, which is learning how to live in the gray, even when the world seems black and white. So for me, when my OCD tendencies lessened and I learned to dismiss intrusive thoughts or resist compulsions, the space they occupied in my brain became empty. So DBT helps you fill that void with healthy coping behaviors. Therapy has saved me. I've gone through a lot throughout my life and I will never stop advocating that therapy is a very valid option for anyone and anyone should be able to get the help they need without the social shame that comes with it. And therapy isn't just for people with diagnosed mental disorders. Talking with someone can help with the stressors of everyday life. And here at Lake Forest High School, we're so lucky to have amazing social workers. And if you're a senior like me preparing to head off to college, go online and see what resources your school has to offer with that major life change. Just like many other mental disorders, OCD is a lifelong disorder. There's no complete cure for OCD, like how you take Advil for a headache or DayQuil for a cold. But that doesn't mean life with OCD isn't manageable. Therapy, medication, and coping behaviors are all ways to live an amazing life alongside anxiety. I've been going through treatment for just over a year now, and I still have struggles every day, but I wouldn't choose to go through life without OCD. OCD has given me such a unique perspective on the world and has taught me so many lessons, making me stronger. So I want to end this talk by saying that you are so much more than your struggles, just like how I'm more than my OCD, and that's why I can walk off this stage without counting my steps. Thank you.